Hello, this video is a project I found online. It is called a Scope Trex, and what it is is a Vectrex clone uh, that you could play on your oscilloscope. This is my old BK Precision 2120B oscilloscope. This was, um, I don't know, late 80s, early 90s. I bought this a long time ago. It's been sitting in a box most of the time because I generally uh, use my digital oscilloscope for any real work. So anyway, here's the page for the scope tracks. I was just wandering around the internet one day when I came across this, and I figured, well, I had to order these PC boards and see if I could make one. And I did go ahead and make it, and you can see it is playing right here on my oscilloscope. I will do some close-up views of it later. Now the scope tracks prototype itself is right here. I mounted it in this case, and I'll open this up and show it in a moment. I did design the 3D printed case myself. Um, it does have a cartridge slot. You can plug cartridges in through the front. Um, it does have three jacks coming out the back. One is for X, one is for Y, and then one is for Z. Um, you do need to have a Z blanking in your oscilloscope. Uh, my oscilloscope, and I wasn't even paying attention when I ordered the PC boards and stuff for this, it does not have Z axis blanking. So what I did is I had to take it apart I found a schematic, and here's the schematic that I found on the internet, and I added a transistor and a couple of resistors to add Z-axis blanking to my old BK Precision oscilloscope, and then I, I packed it up and put it in there and ran a uh, BNC jack out the back. Okay, so what makes this unique? How does a vector display differ from a raster display? In a raster display, the, the TB displays scan lines, kind of does you know, the top line, next one, it kind of goes down in sequence, draws the whole screen, then comes back, draws it again, and it lights up each pixel individually on or off as it's doing that. In a vector display, on the other hand, it has X and Y control, and it's actually out there, if it wants to make this triangle, it just draws a triangle on the screen. Um, if it wants to make these stars, it just moves its beam around and, and lights the stars. If it wants to draw a V, you know, it goes and draws a V. So it is vector graphics instead of uh, raster graphics. There is no scan lining going on. So you can get kind of continuous display rather than um, the, the sort of pixelated display that you usually get. And vector graphics, they have that nice kind of continuous feel to them like that. They were kind of an early arcade gaming. Some of the asteroid games and such would feature uh, displays like that. Okay, we're going to try playing some games. Now you notice I have the oscilloscope turned off. I always um, turn off the oscilloscope when the Vectrex is powered off. Otherwise, you get a bright spot in the very middle uh, that could burn in your screen. So I'm going to turn them both on. And there we've got the Vectrex startup screen. And it will automatically start up with Mindstorm loaded. It's kind of an Asteroids clone, but a little little bit fancier than Asteroids in that you've got uh, the Mines Chase size and such. This should be pole position. Oh no! This is Star Trek, the motion picture.
Here we have Scramble. Now to see what this looks like uh, without the z-axis, I'm going to unhook the z-axis. I'm going to turn down the intensity a little bit because we'll get that bright spot kind of in the middle. But you can see it's drawing each thing and then it's kind of banking over to the next thing it draws. And there we just blew up. But you can see the faint lines and that those are the lines that it's normally blanking out. But I don't want to leave this on too long because I don't want to burn my uh, screen. Hook the z-axis back up and all the faint little lines disappear. Okay, now this is the part that I could use a little bit of help with. I'm going to bring up the Vectrex diagnostics cartridge. And here we're looking at the alignment screen and it, it's not quite perfect. So you can see there's, there's some issues. There's like some double lining stuff there in the middle and some stuff here looks like maybe it should have been lined up better. Uh, we can actually go through several different screens in the diagnostic cartridge. So let me go to this one. This is for adjusting the DAC offset. Now the manual tells you how to do this. I've already done it. You put a multimeter at a specific place inside of it. You measure the voltage. You get your DAC set up. That's done. But this next screen is the, the alignment screen. And this is where I have the most trouble. So you want all of these diamonds, all, uh, what, like nine of them, for the lines going through them to be sort of straight and not not goofy. So let me try adjusting it. So I can adjust it. Now the middle one is now perfect, but the text now has a huge amount of slant to it that doesn't seem right. And we pulled like this one and this one further out. I mean this one up here is fine and the one in the middle is fine. Now if I try to correct, let's try to correct down here and correct this one in this corner. Now this one in this corner is good, but this one is off. This one is way off. That one's way off. This one has become centered. The text looks fine. Uh, so I just, I basically cannot get all of these to look right at the same time. So I don't know exactly what the problem is. I don't know if it's a problem with the, the, the board, uh, my soldering work, or it's a problem with my oscilloscope, or there's just a design aspect to this thing that makes it very hard to get this line properly in an oscilloscope context. Um, I have taken the board out. I cleaned all of the flux off. That didn't seem to help. I took all of the analog ICs, the op amps and stuff out of sockets and soldered them indirectly. That didn't help. I replaced some capacitors. That didn't help. Um, pretty much can't get uh, it aligned any better than this. But as you've seen in gameplay, this is really pretty good for gameplay. It's just not perfect for uh, what you'd want if you actually put this to an arcade monitor. So if anyone else, you know, if you have built one of these scope tracks or you're a Vectrex expert and you know what my issue might be, then please do share. There are a couple more diagnostic screens. Um, it's doing a checksum. This is like a projection screen that it does. Now you'll notice there is some artifacting. The box doesn't actually come quite back together right on that side. That's sound. Here's intensity. Now the intensity is a bit wonky because we are driving an oscilloscope and you know maybe it's not quite linear um, what it's doing in the intensity. I really I mostly have either bright or off and not a whole lot of dim going on. Um, focus. And it, this is distortion screen. I'm not sure what this one is supposed to look like but it is a little bit alarming these triangles on this side, you know, they're a little bit off compared to the other triangles. 
here's another screen and then we do have a joystick test screen so you can see I'm moving the joystick around um, I probably do need to adjust the pots on the joystick to get it centered correctly it's a little bit off but um, this is how you could uh, could tune your joystick with that screen and that's I think that's pretty much it for what the uh, the diagnostic cartridge does um, like I say hopefully um, Hopefully someone has an idea of what's up with my alignment issues. Okay, taking a quick look inside the Scopetrex. As I said before, I did not design this thing myself. I found plans for the, uh, the board on the internet, and I ordered the boards, and I built it. But uh, we can see there's a fair amount of stuff to it. We've got a lot of digital stuff down here. We've got a microprocessor, a 6809, as well as its crystal. Um, there is a peripheral interface that does some I.O. ports for the microprocessor. We've got an AY38910 uh, sound chip. And then we've got uh, RAM and ROM that go along with it. And an expansion card going out the bottom side. Now up here on the top side, there's all kinds of analog stuff. So starting with a D to A converter. Uh, then there's a lot of op amps and other similar analog circuitry, as well as resistor capacitor networks that go along with it. Um, you've got potentiometers for adjusting the X and Y scaling and height and uh, biasing the D to A converter, um, setting the intensity, all kinds of stuff like that. We've got some headers that come out and go to BNC jacks where we can plug in our scope. A couple of DB9s for controllers. Um, a jack here for audio out. Over here there is a DC to DC converter that generates minus 12 and minus 5 volts. A uh, jack here on the side where power goes in and a power switch. Uh, so I did design a case to go around this and um, it's a little bit of work. I came up with some things like uh, an extension here to run the power switch so you can turn it off, on and off. A little extension here that pushes in on the reset button. And then you'll see me uh, running this inside my case. Um, I will put the, the files online for the case uh, when I'm done with the video. And uh, anyone else who wants to build this same case can build one. Now there's also a controller uh, that goes along with the Scope Trex. Um, same, same GitHub site that I found the plans for the Scope Trex itself was this controller. It's got a DB9 that mates to the DB9 on... The console, four buttons. Now this thumbstick is the SparkFun thumbstick, the same one that uh, you may have seen me use in my project for the 5200 controller. A lot of people like using those for analog joysticks. So this whole build was relatively straightforward, uh, though it was kind of a lot of work. I mean, there's a lot of resistors and capacitors and stuff in this thing and to you know get the right values in the right places, but not a technically challenging build, just, um, just a bit of work. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video on the scope tricks that I found the plans for online and built. I certainly enjoyed building it. I do sometimes go off and do this. I go out on the internet and look for something interesting and build it. Um, so if you do know of interesting things to build, please do send them my way. As far as this particular project, uh, there are a few next steps. The first is to try to ask around and see if somebody knows why my alignment isn't as good as I, as I want. Um, I could actually try going in there and replacing some capacitors or something with, uh, you know, maybe I've, in some of my assortments I've got some bum values or something, um, tighten up the component tolerances, I'm not sure. Um, I could also uh, seek out a, a Vectrex. I really do like the vector gameplay, so it would be fun uh, to have a, a actual Vectrex. You'd have a bigger screen, a bigger screen would be nice. Those things are pretty spendy on eBay, so I don't know that um, I don't know that I'm going to find one um, in the price range I'd like to pay unless I get a broken one. Though getting a broken one might certainly afford me uh, some fun in figuring out what's wrong with it and fixing it. Uh, the other thing I could do is to build myself a large monitor. Now there's people uh, who take um, who take TVs. I've recently found out about this. They'll take an old black and white TV. You have to rewind the yoke. You have to build a new deflection board. Um, and you can turn a TV into a vector display. Um, unfortunately, it, it is a somewhat involved process. So there's a guy named Arcade Jason 
and he has some videos up on it, so I could try to follow his video, try to do it myself. Um, it'd be fun to play this on a 19-inch or 21-inch monitor uh, rather than on um, the little oscilloscope screen. So that's another thing that I might pursue. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.